morning and welcome to your coffee break on the HAN Network. I'm Frank Renito and it is Monday, January 15th and today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. As a reminder, schools, banks, government offices and many businesses are closed. Some of this morning's top stories include Martin Luther King Day service and reflection footage, developments in a Texas murder investigation, several Fairfield County fire responses and much more. Kevin Coleman will have a look ahead at this week's weather along with a Nutmeg Sports update and Donald Ang will take a look back on this day in history. But first, some tragic news out of New Canaan. A fourth grade student at West School in New Canaan, Nico Malazzi, died Sunday morning. School officials said Nico went into cardiac arrest while on his way home from an ice hockey tournament, which he left early because he was not feeling well. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Brian Luzzi remembered Nico as a wonderful, friendly child who was the voice of West School's afternoon announcement concluding each school day. Even though classes are not in session, counselors at West School are available to help with students dealing with this tragedy. You can read more on this story at ncadvertiser.com. And as the country pauses in honor of the late Dr. King, churches and other organizations around the area are holding events reflecting on the civil rights leader's life and work. Sunday in Milford, the Reverend Bonita Grubbs and others said democracy is in danger and called on people to be a light. At the Milford Mirror, editor Jill Dion has shared a video featuring Renisi Brown, a 14-year-old student at the Hopkins School in New Haven, reciting Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. You'll also see the Reverend Grubbs, executive director of Christian Community Action Incorporated in New Haven, who called on people to let their feelings be known in what she and others said is a time of darkness. The final clip at the Milford Mirror is of the audience singing Let It Shine together. And moving forward, we see now in Stratford, where an interfaith service is held every year. The Reverend Jeff Lukens told Stratford Star editor Melvin Mason that work continues to achieve Dr. King's goal of achieving community and eliminating racism. Let's take a look at that video now. We believe that it's an important thing to lift up the work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, a lot of the ideals he fought for we're still trying to enact today. Uh, his dream of for the beloved community is still out there. And mm -hmm. the only way we're gonna change the world is if we keep talking about it. Okay. The Stratford service also featured the admission by one of the speakers that he is a recovering racist. Here's a reaction to that confession, uh, courtesy of Melvin Mason. I think uh, Pastor Rawls was uh, very brave today to come out and openly admit that he's a recovering racist. I think as um, a white person, that's something that we all have to do, come to terms with our inner prejudices. Even if we were raised, like myself, not to be bigoted, we still have these prejudices that society has taught us and they're ingrained into us. And we have to be aware of that so that when we bump up against, against them in our daily lives, we're aware and we can consciously make the decision to move past them and move forward. Okay. Um, so it's very important to be aware of that. All right, great work done there by Melvin Mason. Thank you again. A crazy weekend of weather, including rain, followed by the weekend thaw, and then a drop in temperatures caused evacuations and road closures in part of the states. As rain fell Friday, crews were left scrambling to clear storm drains. As you look ahead now, there was... Uh, state police sharing these images of Route 8, which had to be closed for a period on Friday night because the road was underwater. The rain and warm temperatures caused frozen rivers to break up and ice dams resulted in floods. Some national news shows broadcast live from Kent on Monday morning where ice jams caused the Housatonic River to flood the center of town. Now the drop in temperatures is freezing the water that escaped its banks. Firefighters in Weston warned residents that some local brooks spilled into roadways and that water may be freezing in place. Well, let's stick with this weather theme now. We're going to check in with Kevin Coleman, get a look at what we can expect in the coming days. Good morning, Kevin. 
Good morning, Frank. Looks like we got some more accumulation heading our way around the local Connecticut area. But for now, you look outside here in Shelton, Connecticut, cloudy early with peaks of sunshine expected late. Possibly a, a few flurries are possible this evening, a high around 25. We look towards tonight. Partly cloudy with, again, a few flurries are possible with your commute home, a low of 19 later tonight. Look, tomorrow, cloudy and snow showers are developing in the afternoon. Some rain may mix in in the later part of the night, a high of 32. And on Wednesday, snow during the morning, but it'll taper off and give way to cloudy skies during the afternoon, a high of 34. That'll do it for your weather update. Frank, back to you. All right, so some crazy weather still on the way. We're not quite out of it yet. Uh, and there's still plenty more to come this morning on your Monday edition of your Coffee Break, including a look back on this day in history with Donald Ang, a Milford rollover, and a tennis legend. Speaking in Greenwich next, all of that next on the HAN Network. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the women. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. At Ring's End, we say it's time to re-love your home. Time to refresh and reinvigorate the way you live. And whether you're redoing something big or small, remember the letters R-E stand for Ring's End. We're the new model in home remodeling. At Budget Blinds, we're in business to frame the light, the day, and the night. So we give you an exclusive combination of high style, expert service, our no surprises pricing, and our no questions asked warranty. We believe that everyone, at every budget, deserves style and service. Isn't that a beautiful place to be? Welcome back to your coffee break on the HAN Network. It is Monday, January 15th. I'm Frank Renito, and I am happy now to welcome in Donald Ang to like take a look back on this day in history. And good morning, Don. How are you? Good morning, Frank. How are you doing? Uh, we start today in 1559 with the crowning of Elizabeth I as Queen of England in Westminster Abbey. Now the daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, her 44-year reign brought stability to the country, the Elizabethan era, marked by England's inc increasing naval prowess and a flourishing of the arts, led by people like uh, Captain Francis Drake and playwright William Shakespeare. 1870 now, speaking of, uh, speaking of the arts, a political cartoon for the first time symbolizes the Democratic Party with a donkey. That, uh, the, name of the, the name of the cartoon is A Live Jackass Kicking a Dead Lion by Thomas Nast for Harper's Weekly. The donkey is togged Copperhead Papers, referring to the uh, Democrat-leaning newspapers in the South. The lion represents the late Edwin McMaster's Stanton, that was the Secretary of War during most of the Civil War. Uh, four years later, Nast would also be the first to use an elephant to represent the Republican Party. 1892 now, James Naismith publishes the original 13 Rules of Basketball in the Springfield College newspaper, The Triangle. The rules include prohibitions against running with the ball and shouldering or tripping an opponent. Six years later, Naismith would head out west and found the basketball program at the University of Kansas. With a record of 45 wins and 50 losses, basketball's creator remains the only coach in school history to have a losing record. Although the competitive aspects of sports never really interested Naismith, he did live long enough to see basketball adopted as an Olympic sport in 1936. In fact, he handed out the first three medals to the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, respectively. Finally, now we go to two 2009. They've made movies about it. This is how it was in real life. Check it out. Hi, Cactus 1549. It's going to be left traffic to runway 31. Not able. Okay, what do you need to land? Cactus 1549, runway 4 is available if you want to make left traffic to runway 4. What's over to our right? Anything in New Jersey? Maybe Teterboro? Okay, yeah, off your right side is Teterboro Airport. 
Do you want to try to go to Teterboro? Yes. Teterboro, uh, Empire. Actually, LaGuardia departs guy, emergency inbound. Hey, guys. Cactus 1529 over the George Washington Bridge wants to go to the airport right now. Wants to go to our airport. Check. Does he need assistance? Uh, yes. He, uh, it was a bird strike. Can I get him in for, uh, runway one? Runway one, that's good. Cactus 1529, turn right 280. Can land runway right. one at Teterboro. We can't do it. Okay, which runway would you like at Teterboro? We're going to be in the Hudson. Yes, that, of course, was U.S. Airways Flight 1549 ditching in the Hudson after the plane collided with birds a few minutes after takeoff. Uh, of course, if you listen carefully, you hear the air traffic controller repeatedly refer to it as 1529, not 1549. We can forgive him that small, uh, that small little, uh, little lapse there. Uh, everyone on board survived the 150-mile-an-hour impact. Uh, praised for his calm during the emergency, Sullenberger suffered symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder for months following the crash, including sleeplessness and flashbacks. He said the moments before the ditching were the worst, sickening, pit of your stomach, falling through the floor feeling he had ever experienced. That is your look back in history for today, January 15th, and I'm Donald Ng. All right, thank you very much, Don. And getting back to local news now, state police say an intoxicated woman who thought she was in New Jersey sideswiped a trooper's cruiser in Darien early this morning. Trooper Eduardo Santiago was able to avoid a head-on crash, but an Audi driven by 27-year-old Ashton Sheen of Stanford hit the side of his Ford Taurus near exit 12 around 1 o'clock this morning. The crash left both vehicles inoperable, but no one was injured. Steen was charged with reckless endangerment, reckless driving, driving the wrong way, and driving under the influence. State police said her car could be seen going the wrong way on I-95 as far away as exit 6 in Stanford. And new developments in a Texas murder investigation as Ansonia police captured two people, one a former Shelton High School student wanted in connection with a New Year's Day murder in Texas. A former Shelton High School student and a 19-year-old man were taken into custody for their suspected involvement in a murder that took place in Stafford, Texas on January 1, 2018. The two suspects, Giuseppe Valentino Briguglio, 19 of 100, excuse me, 1,111 Falcon Park Drive, Katy, Texas, and a 17-year-old female, formerly of Shelton, were taken into custody by Ansonia police with the assistance of the Shelton and Derby Police Departments at Thursday, January 11th at 9.52 p.m. The press release above was sent out by a Texas Police Department, was shared on Facebook Thursday evening, and stated bo that both Berguglio and the 17-year-old female were both wanted for murder suspects. Chairman of the Shelton Board of Education, Mark Holden, confirmed the rumors circulating social media of a former resident being a wanted murder suspect. Holden added that Shelton High School took extra security measures prior to the suspect's arrest. Both Berguglio and the female suspect were taken into custody without incident at 23 Beverly Drive in Ansonia. And in Fairfield, quick action by Fairfield firefighters and a homeowner taking time to close interior doors prevented a $650,000 property loss at a single-family home on Lampwick Lane Saturday. Fire spiders say the closed doors prevented a fire in the laundry room from spreading to the rest of the house. Contained, the fire was extinguished less than 11 minutes after the first firefighters arrived on scene. No one was injured, and firefighters estimate that the cost to repair damages is at around $10,000. In other news, a Metro North train hit a car at the Topstone Simpog Road crossing in Reading around 11.30 Friday night. The train hit the rear of the car and pushed it 100 yards up the track, officials say. Police say the driver got out of the car prior to it being hit by the train. Neighbors of the crossing have said it is dangerous, and this is the second accident there in as many months. There is more on this story at TheReadingPilot.com. And in sporting news, tennis, king, tennis legend Billie Jean King will be the keynote speaker when Fairfield County's Community Foundation celebrates the 20th anniversary of its Fund for Women and Girls. King will speak April 5th at a luncheon with the theme, Courage, to Create Change at the Hyatt Regency in Greenwich. Tickets are on sale now. Net proceeds from the annual luncheon will support the Family Economic Security Program at Housatonic Community College. 
Built on the successful pilot program at Norwalk Community College, the program will ensure that 400 low-income students over a four-year period persist, graduate, and move into family-sustaining employment. Sponsorship information is available by calling 203-750-3200, and you can find more information at any of our HAN Network news sites. Well, speaking of sporting news, it was a very busy Saturday on the HAN Network, and for more on this, I want to send it over to my partner, Kevin Coleman, for your Nutmeg Sports Update. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. And yes, Saturday, the HAN Network was live at the Darien Ice House for doubleheader hockey action in boys hockey. The first game, it was the New Canaan Rams defeating Northwest Catholic 3-1. Gunnar Granito, Jack O'Hare, Chase Glover were the goal scorers. And of course, the great story continues to be Dylan Shane, who had 19 saves. Three wins in a row now for the New Canaan Rams. In the second game, Darien took on Greenwich in what would be a nail-biter until the very end. The Blue Wave edged the Cardinals 3-2 an intense yet very physical game. James Gregory, Hudson Picorni, and Hunter Hazelton had the goals, and Henry Feifel had 18 saves. And quickly, just want to throw it over, show some love to the wrestlers here in the FCAC. Of course, this weekend was a 2018 Eastern States Classic up in upstate New York. FCAC had nine wrestlers at the meet, seven from Danbury, and two from New Canaan. In the team standings, Danbury was eighth with 83 points. New Canaan was 20th with 39. Top eight wrestlers in each weight class place, and four FCAC wrestlers placed all were top five. And in the latest state poll in Connecticut Wrestling Online, we have three FCAC schools in the top ten. Danbury sitting at one, Ward sitting at four, and Trumbull sitting at six. We're going to have plenty more coverage coming up at 2 p.m. with Nutmeg Sports with myself and Frank Reno. But for now, we'll send it back over to Frank with some more local news. All right, thank you, Kevin. Great to see the Connecticut wrestlers getting a lot of love and continuing their dominance. We're going to take a short break on the HAN network, but still ahead, Stratford voters heading to the polls, a Westport drug bust, more Martin Luther King Day celebrations, and Kevin will announce our Athlete of the Week winners for week number one in the winter season when we get back on your coffee break. Voted best gourmet to go in Fairfield County, Palmer's extensive menu offers everything you'll need to make your next event easy and delicious. Whether you're hosting a small get-together or planning a large celebration, they've got you covered breakfast through dessert. Order online at palmersdarian.com or call 203-655-2077. Yeah, Dad. Kyle, I need you to update the financial statements. I took care of that yesterday, Dad. Mac, I need you to get those deals approved. They're all done, Mr. Miller. Jeff, I need you to order lunch for the meeting. They can't do a thing without me. Right now, Lisa 2017 Centra S for only $97 a month. I'm never going to retire. UK Gourmet is the largest specialty grocer in the area, featuring food from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Over 80 teas to choose from and a brilliant assortment of biscuits to go with them. Over 70 cheeses from grass-fed cows, which makes a smashing difference in taste. The creamiest chocolate you'll ever taste using no artificial colors or preservatives. So say hooray for UK Gourmet. 78 Stony Hill Road in Bethel or visit ukgourmet.us. Dr. Stephen Molinaro and Peter Healy of Family Practice Dentistry and Laser Dental Care have served Richfield for over 22 years. Experienced staff offer gentle drillless techniques, preventative care, and cosmetic procedures in a relaxed environment. Grateful for the community's trust and support through the years, new patients and their families are welcome. Call today. Welcome back to your HAN Network Coffee Break. I'm Frank Renito on this Martin Luther King Day episode, bringing you all of this holiday morning's news. And before we get back to that news, I want to give it back to Kevin Coleman one more time. He has our Week 1 Winter Athlete of the Week winners 
on the HA Network. Kevin, our Th winners, please. Thank you, Frank. It's all Trumbull FCAC winners here for Athlete of the Week. Ashley McGuire of Trumbull Girls Basketball scored 11 points in the unbeaten Eagles 48-37 win over Stanford on Saturday. She had nine points on last Wednesday when Trumbull won 49-41. The decision over Derry Ann. And of course, on the boys' basketball side for Trumbull, it's Tamon Williams. Williams, Tamon Williams scored 29 points on 10 baskets, three from three point range, and six for six performance from the foul line. There's your Frankie free throws right there, Frank. And to lead the Trumbulls past Stanford, 73 57 on Saturday. The Eagles topped Derry Ann 76 59 on Wednesday as Williams scored 20, 27 points. We'll have more coverage of Athlete of the Week on Nutmeg Sports coming up at 2 p.m. Frank, back to you. Right, and of course, we'll have our week two nominees for you later on this afternoon on Nutmeg Sports. Getting back to local news now. Uh, now. Milford firefighters freed a man from his vehicle last Thursday afternoon after he lost control and crashed on the exit 35 ramp off southbound I-95 around 2.45 p.m. Battalion Chief Anthony Fabrizi said Milford firefighters found a passenger vehicle that appeared to have rolled over multiple times after striking highway signs. Fabrizi said the driver was responsive inside of the vehicle, which suffered extensive damage. Fire department paramedics provided medical care while the driver was extricated from his vehicle. No other passengers were in the vehicle at the time of the accident. The driver was transported to Bridgeport Hospital. State police are investing the cause of that crash. And in Westport, police, with the help of Norwalk Police K-9, arrested two men last Thursday afternoon on drug and weapons charges. At approximately 2.45 Thursday afternoon, Westport police stopped a vehicle on Saugatuck Avenue near Duck Pond Road. Officers detected an over of marijuana coming from the vehicle, and a K-9 was requested. The driver was identified as 37-year-old Abdullah Saifula of Stamford. The passenger was identified as 36-year-old Gerard Smalls of Norwalk. A Norwalk police K-9 unit arrived on scene and searched the suspect vehicle. K-9 Kai indicated on the center council of the car. A loaded handgun was found in the center council of the vehicle and 46 methylone pills, plastic bags containing approximately 12 grams of marijuana, and money believed to be proceeds from narcotic sales were located inside a coffee mug contained in the center council. Additionally, a soda can with a hidden compartment containing five small glassine baggies of crack cocaine and a scale were found inside the vehicles. Officers also learned Sefula was the subject of a protective order. Per the conditions of the protective order, he was not to possess firearms. Both Sefula and Smalls were taken into custody and transported to police headquarters for processing. Both men have been held on $100,000 bonds and are scheduled to appear at state Superior Court in Norwalk on January 25th. In Stratford, voters will go to the polls February 27th to choose a new state representative from the 120th District. Laura Hoydick, now mayor of Stratford, resigned her post in Hartford on January 2nd. Nominations from political parties for the race must be completed by January 22nd. The only candidate to officially announce his intentions to seek the seat is Bill Cabral, a Republican and former town council member. The Stratford Democratic Town Committee was going to nominate a candidate on Thursday night, but opted to reschedule after the vacancy had not officially declared. The DTC will meet on Thursday, January 18th to choose a candidate. And Monroe's WNR Fine Arts Radio will keep sending its signal from 731 Main Street for another five years. The Monroe Town, Monroe Town Council approved the lease agreement for the station to continue to lease the space. While the lease is in the town's name, station director Kurt Anderson stated in a letter to town council that WMNR covers all costs using donated funds from listeners that were put into the WMNR Special Reserve Fund. WMNR moved out of Massac High School and into rented commercial space at 731 Main Street in 2003 when the high school was renovated. Since the lease was extended in 2008 and also again in 2013, WMNR Fine Arts Radio is licensed to the town of Monroe. The station is funded entirely by listeners, foundations and businesses and plays classical music 24 hours a day 
heard throughout much of Connecticut and nearby portions of New York. And as cold as it's been, it's not too early to start thinking about summer. Uh, as in New Canaan, officials are doing just that and working to reduce the cost of a 2018 seasonal pass to the Waveney Pool. The cut in cost from 265 to 175 has been proposed by the Parks and Recreation and now must be approved by the Board of Selectmen. The proposal would also allow the sale of a limited number of non-resident passes to Kiwanis Park, home to a swimming pond, which is also surrounded by sand. You can learn more at NewCanaanAdvertiser.com. Let's take a break here, though. We're going to throw it over to Kevin Coleman. He wants to give you one more look at the weather as we head into the start of this work week. Kev. Oh, thank you, Frank. If only it was summer. We'd kill for some sunny and 75 weather, I'll tell you that. But right now, we've got some accumulation heading into our way in local Connecticut right now. Cloudy with early peaks of sunshine expected late. A few flurries are possible for your commute home this evening, a high around 25. And tonight, partly cloudy skies, low of 19. Tomorrow, cloudy with some snow showers developing in the afternoon. Some rain may mix in at night, a high of 32. And on Wednesday, snow during the morning hours will taper off and give way to cloud cloudy skies during the afternoon, a high of 34. That'll do it for your weather update. Frank, back to you. All right, thank you, Kev. And finally, in Ridgefield, celebration of Martin Luther King Day Jr. will be highlighted by live music as well as readings and thoughts on the legacy of the slain civil rights leader from 3 to 4.30 at the Ridgefield Playhouse this afternoon. The event is free to all, and at this year's ceremonies, the Town Spirit of Dr. King Community Service Award will be given to Lori Beresford, Spheres President and Board Chairwoman, and a volunteer at numerous other charitable, charitable organizations. There is much more on this at the ridgefieldpress.com. That's going to do it for this episode of your Coffee Break on Monday, January 5th. Kevin and I will be back at 2 p.m. this afternoon with Nutmeg Sports. We hope that you get to enjoy the rest of your Monday. As always, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Let's leave with some more video by the Stratford Star editors, Melvin Mason, from Sunday's Observance in Stratford. Mm -hmm.